Alright, today we're finding out how ice ages happen, the Milankovitch cycles. Over Earth's long history, there have been dramatic changes to our climate. No, the ice ages have true. come and gone. Yeah. And what's surprising is that there's a strong pattern that explains why ice ages happen when they do. Yeah, let's, let's this is out. called the Milankovitch cycle. Named after Milutin Milankovitch, his theory explains how the Earth's climate changes over hundreds of thousands of years. His theory is based on two key ideas. First, the Earth's climate is strongly affected by how much sunlight the northern latitudes receive during the summer. Yes. Second, this amount of sunlight varies based on changes in the Earth's orbit and rotation. Mm, Why are the northern latitudes so important? It's because of ice. When sunlight right. hits the ground, most of the energy is absorbed as heat. Yeah. But if the ground is covered in ice, most of the light reflects away because true, ice yeah. is white. This creates a positive feedback loop. Ice forms when it's cold, but ice also reflects light, making it colder, oh. which forms more ice. So I So what what you're saying basically is ice produces more ice? Huh? That's mental, I did, I, not thought of that. This is really important for climate. The northern and southern hemispheres both contain lots of ice. They do, yes. But there's more ice in the north because hmm. there's more land. There land is, yeah. has a lower heat capacity than water, which means that water doesn't change temperature as easily as land does. Hmm. This is why coastal regions are generally more mild and why ice forms more easily on land. Fair Just enough. look at the difference between the northern and southern hemispheres. In the yeah, south, there are ice caps that grow the during its winter, but not nearly as much as they do in the north. During the winter, yeah. the land above the Arctic Circle is covered in darkness, experiencing twilight 24 hours a day. It's very cold, it's and lots of bad. ice forms during the winter. And this is true no matter what's going on with Earth's orbit. The key variable here is how much Actually ice feels. melts during the summer. Mm, this depends yeah. on how much sunlight there is during the summer. Now you might think that this doesn't change, but it does. Ooh. Milankovitch showed that over hundreds of thousands of years, the amount of summer sunlight can shift plus or minus 15%. Wow. This can bring ice. God, that is a, a large, large amount. That's a, that's a massive... Oh my God. Ice ages. This can end ice ages. How can the amount of summer sunlight be changing? Well, first, the distance from the Earth to the sun is mm -hmm. changing. Yeah. And second, the Earth's tilt is yeah, changing. I'd say this. The Earth's axis is currently tilted at 23 and a half degrees. Yeah, but this changes. Other objects influence the Earth gravitationally, nudging its tilt up and down. Very Every 41,000 years, it cycles up and down. Huh. When the Earth is more tilted, there's more sunlight during the summer. More summer sunlight means that more of our ice melts away. That is true, yeah. With less ice on the ground, less light is reflected away giving us a warmer climate. Hmm. Earth is unusual. Isn't it as well, that's the, um, we're in that part of it now, cause what's it, um, the Northern Circle, it, it's, it's shrinking. I believe so. I, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure that's, that's true. Cool. And that it's tilt doesn't change very much. Earth has a very large moon, which stabilizes it is, its yeah. tilt. Mars has two tiny moons, and so its tilt changes much more dramatically. Ooh. The next effect is the distance from the Earth to the Sun. All right. The Earth's orbit is not a circle, it's an ellipse. Hmm. Every 4th of July, we celebrate Aphelion, the day that the Earth is farthest from the Sun. Then in January, the Earth moves closest to the Sun. Now the planets Jupiter and Saturn both nudge the Earth, causing its orbit to shift slightly 
becoming either more oval or more circular. Wow. This happens over a period of 100,000 years. This effect is uh -huh. wildly exaggerated in this diagram. Yeah, it actually looks like more like this. You can barely even see that the distance to the sun is changing. But this there. subtle change has important consequences for our climate. Yeah. Earth as a whole receives 6% more sunlight during January Ooh. than it does in July. The seasons change. That is quite the, quite the difference. Huh? It doesn't feel, seem like that much of a difference. But I've got a question, right? If the, um, was it perihelion is on January 3rd, why is that not the new year? That would make the most sense uh, for the day, I feel. Maybe we should push everything back to, um, yeah, push everything back two days. Because the North Pole sometimes tilts towards the sun and sometimes tilts away. Yep. The change in the distance to the sun this works against the change in the seasons. This moderates the seasons in the north, since the Earth is furthest away mm -hmm. in July. It's true. But this was not always true. The Earth's axis is moving in a circle. It's spinning like a top. This is called precession. Is. In fact, I made an entire video about this. And what this means is that 13,000 years ago, the tilt of the Earth was reversed. When the Earth was closest to the Sun, it was summer in the north. The distance change didn't oppose the seasons, it amplified seasons, wow. making them more extreme. Now, warmer summer means more melting. More melting that means is, yeah. less reflection, which means the climate as a whole is warmer. The amount of summer sunlight is affected by three long-term cycles. One changes the tilt. Yep. One makes our orbit more circular, or more oval. Yep. And one changes how the distance to the sun matches with the changing of the seasons. Hmm. These three cycles powerfully impact our climate. Scientists have measured the history of our climate using ice cores. Now, Earth's climate is it's complicated. You can't just reduce it to a single input. Right. But the Milankovitch cycles have played a key role in our climate oh, there's, for there's hundreds of thousands there. of years. There, there we go then. Well, there is actually correlation with Milankovitch cycles and and temperature. That's mental, you know. So, so yeah, there we go. We find out that it's a it's an ice age when we are furthest from the from the sun, and there's a lot more lot. It's a lot colder, and there's less sunlight. That's what we find out.